So hi guys, uh, tonight I am heading out to my friend's farm and um, in pursuit of some roe deer, all being well. Um, I was filming here the other week with the hay cutting and um, lots of buzzards around, um, lots of mammal species and stuff like that, um, taking advantage of the, the um, recent cut. So, and when I was leaving that night, I spotted a great field with some roe deer in. So I thought, well, weather's nice. Come out sort of early evening and I'm gonna set up the Lagopus Tragopan hide, uh, get in there and hopefully we'll get some roe deer in the meadow later, um, all being well. But I'm just gonna give it a go. Just going down a rather tight country lane here. And I'm gonna get there, get the hide set up, get in and um, hope for the best. So here we are guys, we're set up in the, um, the Tragopan Lagopus and uh, obviously it's very hot at the moment and uh, I've got the side window open here, this window's closed and there is no vent at the back but we've got a nice, all the cameras set up at the front. Let's undo this. Last time we're all the way down in here. They've got a little bit of woodland there that they come out of, and um, yeah, so hopefully we'll get uh, rewarded with some views of those later. Also, the field is quite long in front here, it's a bit short, but then it goes quite long. And up the side here, we've got a load of hay bales, which will be an ideal position for them to, to perch on and feed along because there's a, a nice long field margin around the edge which is great for the owls to hunt in and the bales to perch on so i'm hoping you know come maybe three or four hours time we might get some sightings of maybe an owl or maybe a roe deer or maybe nothing but who knows that's the fun of it really we're in here it's a great hide it really is i mean they've got a 500 there tripod down below got one of the um tripod legs out one of the holes i've got mobile phone stashed in there I've got I don't know if you can see these very very difficult I've got pouches either side pouches down there with crisps and drinking another cup holder there yeah really good I mean it's snug you know um, my bags in the back I could have put my bag underneath the seat but I've just chucked it behind in some long grass so one man with a large prime small lens whatever really is ideal um, just a smaller version really and it doesn't stick out so much it's a little bit weighty um, but if you're going from a short hop from the vehicle or just across a couple of fields or whatever it's not too bad um, just sling it over your shoulder off you go but uh, it's only the second time I've ever used it and I said to when I did a little um, a video on it a while back when I was trying to f um, film the nut hatches there's a video on that above which goes into the detail a bit more about the lagopus but um, yeah really really good one man hide set up with an integral chair, really comfortable, so simple to set up. Um, and so guys, if you're interested in any of these um, products, Lagopus, Tragoban B6, Hockey, you know, all the range that they've got, please check out the um, Tragoban website in the vlog description. Don't forget to put in the 5% discount code RichardTrago5 to get 5% off. Um, but anyway, enough of that. I'm going to go quiet now, have a drink take it all in and uh, wait for a few hours and hopefully we'll be um, in some luck, we'll see. So guys, the fact that I've seen roe deer in here once doesn't mean they come in here every night. Um, but there's two fields here that have um, not been cut and there's a lot of green, fresh growth in here. The rest of the fields have all been cut for grass. So I'm kind of thinking that there's roe deer in the area. And I saw them there before. I kind of hedge my bets it's going to be pretty guaranteed, but um, 
as we all know, there's nothing guaranteed with wildlife photography and things could be completely different. Um, but like I always say, you know, it's just sitting here watching the world go by and anything could, could turn up, you know, badger in front, fox, you just don't know really. Um, big sign if it did happen and we did get to see something, but I'm all set up, fresh battery, camera already, tripods level, a nice bit of air coming through here, I'm nice and relaxed, just have a little bite to eat so I'm not making any noise later. And it's just a waiting game really now. Um, but I'm going to have to be quite quiet during this vlog, purely for the fact that obviously the deer have got very, very good sense of smell and good hearing. And at this proximity where I am to where they probably were coming out of the hedge line before to feed is close. So I really will be quite quiet throughout and I'll vlog as and when I can. But uh, for now, I'm going to go quiet for a couple of hours and uh, hope for the best a bit later. I just had a, the most exciting experience with a roe deer ever on about, I don't know, six foot from a hedge right here. I heard a commotion in the blackthorn. The roe deer came bouldering through the middle of the hawthorn and blackthorn straight at the hide. It was about four foot away. I saw like the saliva in its mouth. I ducked forward just trying to get behind this netting here. It just moved ever so slightly and it absolutely thundered it back through. I was like, no, of all the places, of all the hedge lines, it had to come through right next to me. Unbelievable. So if that's the resident road deer here, it ain't gonna come back here tonight. Um, so I think that's probably it for road deer. No guarantees that it will, but when I saw them in here last week, they were coming in from that end. I didn't expect them from this end. Oh man. Um, is gone now. The wind's coming this way. It wouldn't have picked up my scent at all. It just literally saw me and then obviously got with and then it went. Oh, it's an amazing experience seeing it so close, but I could have almost touched it. Crikey, lovely looking deer. So guys, this could be a, uh, a short vlog tonight, I think. <laughs> But let's hold out for an hour, hopefully. Um, who knows? We might still be in some luck for some deer, but I don't think it's likely to happen. <sighs> Never mind. So guys, as you can see on the screen there, we have a roe deer that's just decided to uh, peg it with its youngster just there behind scroll through. Ah, oh, such a shame. They've obviously, the roe deer that came through was, there's the female at the front and there's the youngster at the back. Oh, likely to have been born this year, that one back in June. Beautiful, but they absolutely pegged it. Um, basically right in front of me, midpoint of the field. And, uh, Tearing through up the top through another field. Oh, just the way it happens, it really is. They absolutely pegged it. Um, I managed to get a few shots of them moving away from me, but you know, in a shot like that, they're moving away from the camera, there's no detail in the face. I got a bit of video of them just tearing on through just for a bit of um, bit of footage just for you guys just to see um, if I don't get any else but uh, oh it's a bit of a shame this is clearly the place they use 
the youngster here, um, the roe doe there, oh, there may be a male come through later, maybe. Well, that's a shame. I mean, the, oh, this massive field's got to be 25 acres. And it's got a lot of hedge. They came through right next to the hive. I didn't see a, an entry or exit point. It's thick as you like there. Oh, it's sort of mad. The fact they've came through that one spot where I was parked up. <sighs> Very skittish, roe deer, especially in Cornwall. So, yeah, that's probably it for the road deer tonight, unless that male comes in. But we'll have to see. Could be a fox, could be an owl. So we'll rely on something else. But uh, I'd have to leave the site now for a few days. Bear in mind, it'd be great to leave the hide in here. But to be honest, you know, if people are walking through, although they shouldn't be, I don't want it to get pinched. So, yeah, that's a shame. If I had a ghillie suit, uh, probably could have put that on and hidden in the grass, but they could have still come right next to me. But nightmare. Anyway, it's good to see them. It's a shame they're running in that direction. But there we go. These things happen. So that just goes to show the footage you just seen then of them running across the field. Um, it's not what you want as a wildlife photographer, is species running away from you. Um, but it is the way it goes with all the will in the world. Um, all the stealthy approaches, the wind direction, the signs, sometimes you just can't odds on things like that happening. It's not done them any harm. Um, you know, it's just a bit of unfortunate really, but there is a chance now because the rutting season is for the roe deer is kind of late June, July, so there's a very good chance there could be some bucks in here later doing some stuff. There's a lot of tree cover down the bottom there and uh, it's very quiet here. There's no real public access here, so, you know, there's a very good chance that could happen and if, you know, if it didn't happen for those particular deer, but there's a chance that other things can come out. Badgers, foxes, owls, buzzards, you know, it's just a bit of a shame. That would have been lovely. My idea was to be, you know, to witness maybe a young roe deer. It still had its young markings on it. A beautiful thing. A lovely condition. But, uh, yeah. I still love it though. I mean, the excitement of seeing things like that. Just amazing. Um, picture or no picture. Wildlife's incredible. Swallows buzzing up and down here at the minute, changing the subject, but they're bombing up and down this little bit of a bill margin here. Absolutely fantastic. Hawking along, lovely. Wow, boom. Love the swallow. Great stuff. Anyway, it's kind of like 22. So it's time to go a little quiet now and uh, let's hope for uh, a few more things turn up. Okay guys, another tip for you. Um, many of you uh, seasoned photographers already know, but you really have, and I say it all the time, you've got to keep your wits about you really. It's very easy to sit here in this comfy chair, which it is really comfy. Nice back on it, it's really nice. Rather than sitting on a stool where you get a sore back. And you need to keep looking. 180 at least here, constantly scanning around. Now I picked those deer up probably a few seconds late as they were running past where the lens barrel was facing. This is a shame because I could have got them in the gateway as they were actioning across. Could have got some more shots but I was paying attention out the window. Now, there's not much I can do about that but if you just sit here, not really engaging with the environment you're in, you will miss stuff. You know, could be fox cubs coming out there. So guys, just literally bear it in mind, okay? Just keep scanning around, have everything ready to go, and just expect to see something every time. 
and it just keeps your adrenaline going, keeps the interest going. Well, I never get bored. I've sat in hides for 12 hours and seen nothing. So for me, it's like happy days. Time flies anyway. Thinking about other things, thinking about new ways of doing um, some videos, new way of capturing images, just projects, all sorts of stuff, you know, whilst I'm looking around, scoping around, listening for sounds. Um, yeah, it's just on alert all the time. So guys, it's getting quite late now. It's about eight o'clock and um, it's kind of, everything seems to be going quiet. Can't hear much traffic, helicopters, voices in the distance. So it's a good time just to check your batteries, make sure that you've got a good bit of power in there. If not, change them over rather than Obviously, when things start to come out, you have to change things, like GoPro batteries here. I'll put a fresh one in a minute as well. Camera battery, fresh one in. Um, also, things like this, I've got a little GoPro holder there, a little battery holder. I've put tissue in there, so when you shake it, it doesn't rattle. Just little things like that. But get everything ready. We've got a few rabbits coming out. It's just a 
is a weekly event, daily event now. Farmers are seeing them every day. Um, so much, much more common now. Um, and even monk jack have been spotted and we don't, I don't think we've got any of those down here. We've got a couple reds now as well. So it's fantastic as a, a photographic subject. Bit of a nightmare for the farmer. But um, oh, it's fantastic to be here tonight, specifically.
Well guys, that concludes the uh, evening session with the roe deer. It's been fantastic. Um, started off a bit slow, but uh, it certainly got there in the end. Had some uh, fantastic views of, I saw seeing two bucks, two does and two youngsters. Um, plenty of crow species, saw a young fox coming through, which was awesome. Uh, and just at the end, as I was packing up, got the uh, lagopus in the bag and then the roe deer came right in and then I literally just got behind the camera, froze and just trained on it and in come the roe deer. It's lifting its foot up, smelling, testing the air. So it was absolutely superb way to finish. And I just stayed still and the deer just slowly moved off and then he went under the undergrowth. But uh, hopefully I got some great shots there. Now I'm gonna head back, have some tea and um, yeah, what a sunset. So uh, as always guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you all next time.